Fighting over the disputed Nagorno-Karabakh region intensifies. Armenia's defense ministry then saying uh, Karabakh separatist forces have repelled a massive attack by Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan's defense ministry saying its forces have captured new footholds and that Armenians have suffered losses. Well, let's get you the very latest on this story. France 24's Catherine Norris Trent is standing by in Baku, let's see, uh, Azerbaijani capital. Uh, Catherine, officials then have been speaking out today regarding this conflict in the Nagorno Karabakh region. What have they been saying? Yes, in a very different version of events than that we're hearing from the Armenian side. We heard from uh, a high-up advisor to the Azeri president and uh, Azerbaijan's chief prosecutor who said the country was opening 12 criminal, in criminal investigations into what he called attacks indiscriminate attacks on the civilian populations in Azerbaijan, which he said had so far killed 19 civilians on the Azerbaijan side, wounded 63 others and damaged some 300 properties. So they're accusing the Armenians of uh, indiscriminate shelling and war crimes, not mincing their words at all. They've also accused the Armenians of having uh, Syrian and Libyan mercenaries fighting for them in a mirror image of some of the claims we've heard coming out about the Azeri side. So they were very clear uh, today, those officials, saying that there will be no ceasefire here as far as they're concerned until Armenian forces totally pull out of the disputed territory of Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, just a reminder of the conditions here. We are under reporting. We're accompanied pretty much at all times by an official minder uh, on behalf of the Azeri authorities, but very much getting their perspective on things, which is clearly the complete opposite of what we're hearing on the Armenian side. I mean, Catherine, as you say, this, uh, you know, across the spectrum, we are seeing uh, differing uh, views on what started this and, and indeed uh, where it's heading. What have people in uh, Baku uh, been telling you? What's the mood there like at the moment? But it's really interesting when you walk around the capital, Baku, uh, because you see Azeri flags being flown out of apartment windows and shop windows and from cars. Now, some of these, we were told, were already here, but uh, this show of national pride, we are told by people on the streets, has become much more marked since this long-running conflict uh, has flared up again in recent days. And speaking to people on the streets here, um, people saying that, you know, this conflict for them, some of the young people, has lasted longer than their lifetimes. It's been uh, boiling over for 30 years, saying that Azerbaijan should stand up for itself. And some of the young men we were speaking to in particular saying that they considered themselves uh, uh, to join the military to help this battle on behalf of their country. There is military service here in Azerbaijan for all young men under the age of 35, those are exempt to those studying. But the flow of civilians, officials say, signing up to join the front lines. Another interesting uh, thing here, which we can see the streets, it's pretty much deserted now because as of 9 p.m. every night since the end of uh, uh, September when this conflict flared up, there's a, uh, a curfew in place. Only very few out on the streets after that time. And we've seen Azeri police going around their sirens blaze speakers calling on people to get off this time. And this is the case in all the in the capital, Baku, and along uh, the border with Nagorno-Karabakh, the line of this conflict. All right, Catherine, Catherine Norris-Trent reporting from the capital Baku there. Thank you.